equal fractions. There are many ways to write the same fraction, and at times you may want different denominators. So let's look at this situation, where we have one third of a pizza left. Well, that is a very large piece, so we may decide to cut it into three slices. To figure out how big each slice is compared to the whole pizza, we need to look at how many equal pieces the whole pizza can be cut into. As we can see, we've cut it into nine pieces, so we have three ninths of the original pizza. Therefore, three ninths must be the same as one third. Those pieces seem a little small, so perhaps we would rather cut each slice in half, giving us two sixths of a pizza. Well, it doesn't matter what we call it one third, three ninths, or two sixths. All of the fractions are equivalent. We still have one third of the pizza left. That's fine. But now let's look at what we actually did to change the fraction from one third to two sixths. To do this, we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction by two. But wait, why are we allowed to do that? Why can I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number and not change the value of the fraction? It's very simple. The only number you can multiply something by without changing it is one, but two over two is the same as one. So as long as we're multiplying or dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number, we won't change the value of the fraction. Can you see why this doesn't work with adding and subtracting? Let's look at a few examples. To start, let's simplify the fraction 8 twelfths. First, we need to figure out what number goes into both 8 and 12. Since both numbers are even, we know that they are divisible by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 12 divided by 2 is 6, giving us 4 6. Wait a second. Those numbers are both even as well, so I'm not done. We'll have to divide them both by 2 again, giving us 2 thirds. Maybe you noticed that 4 went into both 8 and 12 and saved yourself a step. But either way, we get 2 thirds as the answer. What if I had three-fourths of a cake left, and I wanted to share the cake with eight friends? That would mean that there are nine of us who want to eat cake. How much of the original cake did each person get? Well, first I need to know how many pieces the original cake was cut into. We can set this up as the ratio three-fourths is equal to nine over some number of slices. In math, when we have an unknown, we let a letter represent that quantity. Let's use n to represent the unknown. Well, we know that three times three is nine. If we don't want to change the value of our fraction, we need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So we will need to multiply four by three, giving us 12. In this case, the cake would have been cut into 12 pieces and each of us would have gotten one twelfth of the cake. Look, Sam and I found some baby tree frogs. My frog is four ninths of an adult frog and Sam's frog is five twelfths of an adult frog. Which of our baby tree frogs is larger? To compare these fractions, we need to find a common denominator. Usually we do this by writing out the multiples of 9 and the multiples of 12. Then we look for the smallest number that they both go into. In this case, 36. If we multiply 4 ninths by 4 over 4, we get 16 36. And if we multiply 5 twelfths by 3 over 3, we get 15 36. So my frog is a little bit larger. Just so you know, we often use equal fractions when we're adding fractions as well, but we'll cover that in a later lesson.